just random chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Start from Arizona tea. Do you drink that that bottle? Of uh, oh. We usually don't. There's a lot of like sugar in those ones. We prefer like the more natural herbal teas, um, stuff that doesn't have a whole lot of caffeine in it. Do you That's drink coffee? Prefer. Not very much, no. Um, I mean, every now and then, like, she just made the homemade brewed coffee mm. with, like, the French press. Ah, uh, yes. How did you make the, the cold... Cold brewed coffee? Um, if you go to... <laughs> if you go to any supermarket, I get organic coffee beans. They're very heavily pesticided, sprayed with pesticides, so it's best to get organic coffee beans. But you just grind them up, and it's a third of a cup of ground coffee to each cup of water and you just throw it all together in a pitcher and you let it sit in your fridge for about three days. If you, I like it kind of darker, more strong, so I did three days, but you could do as little as one day. And it's just a really easy way to have iced coffee on the go. Hello, this is our beautiful summer. Shall we say hello to others, to our friends? Hello. <laughs> Why are you vegetarian? Are you vegetarian? Are you born vegetarian or religious reason? No, um, there's no real reason for my vegetarianism other than the fact that um, we both are for ethical treatment of animals mm. and uh, a lot of a lot of more mainstream meats also have a lot of hormones mm. and other things in them is in that nature, but. Um, I wasn't born vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I definitely, definitely still like to eat meat, yeah. but we just choose not to because okay. we love yeah, environment we, stuff we, and we, we like to... With pals, with friends, yes. Yeah, yeah. You will not be the typical person. Right, but when we're at home we make vegetarian dishes just because we want to have as little of an impact on the world and the environment as we can in a negative way. And when we do eat meat, it's we try to get the stuff from Whole Foods or or things that are more more ethically treated. Okay. But I still like to eat meat. Yeah. Just very, very seldom. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been a teacher? I, yeah, I actually, uh, I was in this job has been four years. But uh, when I was in university, I was. Uh, spare time teacher to make an income like that. So sometimes I tell my my son, I told him, if you can speak Chinese, you can make money by teaching Chinese. <laughs> At least another language. But now they speak French also, so they, so they can yes. make money teaching French and Chinese. Yeah, they're definitely well set for life if they can speak three different languages. To be teachers. Yeah. <laughs> So we have to learn Mandarin. Yes, I would like to. I've definitely been wanting to learn Chinese for a while. Hmm. Are you going to take a class or something? I want to do the Rosetta Stone, just because they say that that's the quickest way to learn, but I haven't ever actually done it myself, so I'm not sure. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of luck with language hmm. classes. Oh, okay. Um, but Is that I also, because of time? Or? It's because of the way the teacher handles the classroom oh. a lot of the time. But I only I only have like a public school uh -huh. experience with language. I've never taken a college class, college language class before. That's very interesting because I have uh, children, my own children, and also a lot of students. That's something interesting I would like to ask both of them. Were you a good student? <laughs> <laughs> And um, this will make our dialogue way I'm, much more fun. I'm, uh, it depends uh, on how you define good students. Mm -hmm. I'm Were not they respectful students. Yes. yes, I'm very respectful to the teacher and to the other students who are in the class. As far as my, as far as my, um, my discipline in studying. Not so much. I uh, I prefer to, to do my juggling stuff, and sometimes that gets in the way of my studies. So I have a hard time uh, prioritizing. I guess. And also, 
Can you sit still? You I have ADHD. No, no, no I have ADHD, so you it is do. very difficult. Yes, it was very okay. difficult for me to sit still. Like it's very difficult to deal with him when he has to sit still. Yeah, I can sit still, and I've learned ways. And doing my juggling stuff has given me a really good outlet to to make it so that when I do need to sit down and focus, I actually can. But I still naturally have to kind of get up and move around and do something physical. Yeah, I feel because you are so active moving around. And can you concentrate? It's difficult, but it's getting better with time. Okay. Um, I've started reading more books, uh -huh. and that's definitely helped. Um, because when I was younger, I just didn't have the patience. I just couldn't sit still and read the book. All I wanted to do was have it be over with so that I could go back outside and play. Okay. So it's, Can it's you concentrate better. on playing? Yes. My concentration when it comes to my physical activities is really comes really naturally. Okay. So that has been a benefit. And also, can you concentrate on doing something fun that you are interested in? Do you have longer patience and a longer span of, uh, of concentration? Yeah, yeah, and actually that, that connects yes. right back with academic stuff because yes. in, in school I was really interested in science yes. and um, what was the other class? I really liked history as well, but mostly science. Mm -hmm. And that class I was actually really able to like always buckle down and study well because I was interested in it yes. and it was something I really wanted. So it okay. made it a little bit easier. And it always makes it a little bit easier if you're interested in something. To start okay, out. so because you like to move and when you concentrate, can you physically forget about the physical distraction? And just sit, sitting there because you are focused yeah. and passionate about the thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you can be. It's easier now to get lost in okay. what I'm doing okay. and forget everything else. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, you always so quiet and no, um, not as well. <laughs> and analytical. He's been cerebral, kind of. Um, he's almost the opposite. I've been more uh, able to sit down and study something or learn something, but with with props and with dance and, and the things that we do, it doesn't come naturally to me at all. He can pick up a prop or some toy that he's never seen with or played with before and kind of already have a sense of what to do with it, but I'm not that way at all. I can watch somebody do something that's even kind of similar to what I do, but it takes... I can't be instructed either. I have to like do it myself and, and learn by doing it and messing it up enough times to learn. But with literature and text and doing kind of schoolwork studious things, it's not as difficult. But whenever we were younger in high school, I was much more rambunctious, very loud. Which is why I think that we got along so well, was because I had ADHD, she was really book smart, but was also really like loud and outgoing. So we got along together really well. And I think still for the same reasons. You, you, you learned about child, children, child education, no matter a certificate or not, but you, you are interested in it. And from what we have done dealing with children all the time, some people cannot learn. They have to learn by themselves, right? And um, how can do you have any suggestion or any thoughts on this? how to get the best of children and let him learn whichever way or find the best way to to let them learn, allow them to learn. I think it's difficult because children, um, depending on their temperament and personality, yes. it um, will vary based upon um, just what their strengths are. So it's difficult because the school system that we've structured yes. is kind of just a get them through in this order in this way as quickly yes. as they can. And not everybody can learn that way. TJ was that yes. way also where he had a lot of difficulty in, in studies just because he's not he can't sit and learn math yeah. and just do it 
but he can do these very physical things, we yes. geometric, spatial yes. oriented things. Yes. And practical application also makes it a little bit easier too, mm -hmm. as opposed to just sitting down and doing the paperwork and the testing and, and the sitting down and doing it that way. As If they were to show it to us in a more active, real environment, it would have been an easier way for me to learn. I think that in a perfect world, if we had the resources and the time necessary, we could take the time to really individuate the schooling system a little bit more. So we could, for example, take a child like TJ and figure out a way for it to um, apply to him so that he's more engaged in the activity. Um, but I think also, like with a lot of schooling nowadays, there's this big problem of boredom. Uh, a lot of kids, they they don't want to go to school. Yeah. It's not an enjoy an enjoyment. And I think mm. that if we found a way to yeah. remedy that and maybe introduce some. Um, more dynamic cur curriculum that would engage the interests of young people in a new way that might help to. And also, I always think our strength is our weakness, and our weakness is our strength. So you like to play, and now you make play become kind of your, your, your living or your source of life. Yeah. And uh, this inspires you to, to want to do free play. Yeah. What is behind this? Motivation um, yes. to like do street performing and stuff like that. Um, well, I think it started out. I was living in New Hampshire during the winter, and I'm from Arizona, so that climate's very different. And a friend showed me the contact juggling thing, the thing I showed you earlier with the sphere, and that became the like kindling for all of these different things that I've started doing, and it's become a real outlet now. Uh, so it wasn't really that I expected it to become like a really profound experience and I didn't expect it to lead up to anything more than just a hobby, but I found how much it benefited my brain and how much it benefited me to spend time focusing on something else that I really enjoy and then that gave me a little bit more room to kind of sit down and do other things as well. Um, so it was, it was more just by accident. And now, now only looking back can I see how it's been benefiting me. And when I first started out, it, there was just really no way to see any of that. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty, it was really unexpected. So it's more just like I'm taking it as it's coming and I'm learning yes. as it comes. Yes. yes. So I think hobby is, is a very important and a very fun thing. If you can use your hobby as a, as a life source, your whole life is playing. Yeah. So what is the benefit of it? You, you can unimaginable. And you want to do street no, performing. No. Mm -hmm. What is behind this thought? Um, my thought behind that is that I want to share with everybody um, the benefit to taking some time out of your day to not focus on the things that you have to do and focus on the things that you kind of want to do and are passionate about because that's going to help you in your overall well-being, your overall happiness, and your emotional maturity, and your ability to learn, and your ability to reason. Um, so that's a, that's a really big motivating factor, is that not a lot of people understand that life isn't super serious all the time, and you need to take some time out in your day to, to do something you really enjoy that's fun and different, because playing is how you learn. Yes. And so if you if you completely ignore your playful mm -hmm. side, yes. then you're really kind of mm. kind of cutting yourself off from yeah. learning more and no matter how old you get, you're never going to stop learning. But if you choose to just live this serious life where yeah. you have this 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 schedule every day where you just get up and go to work and come home and sleep and eat, then it's really depriving you of something really beneficial. Yeah. Yes. And how can people get a habit? Or yours is very interesting because you always like to play, and some people like to paint, and you like to do something. Would you like to share something you particularly like? Talk about like your writing stuff. Yeah. I don't write too much anymore. Most of my creative outlets are. Um, well, I have a variety. 
variety. I like to sing and I like to cook a lot and I like to play with my hula hoop. But I think that in general, kind of what you were saying earlier, there's not enough emphasis on personal happiness. There's yes. there's too much emphasis on the things that people think will make them happy. So mm -hmm. doing work or um, getting into a good school that they allow yeah. they allow the path to their happiness to be what they are consumed in whenever it's it ends up not making them happy at all. And a lot of times whenever somebody wants to do something for themselves, it's seen as almost like slacking off or just kind of having your head in the clouds or whatever. But I think that it's really beneficial, almost it's essential to find something that you enjoy thoroughly that you can do and have yes. it not feel like something that you're working at, but rather something that you are are doing the pleasure of it. You're doing it just because you're doing it, and and that will benefit you even if you think it's not. Even and if you don't think it will, it will definitely and help. And even you without seeing you doing the job, I know you are a happy person from very beginning. So it's one of your nature, right? And what I find is it's not important what you choose to be your hobby. It's important to have something as right. a hobby. But you never want to find a hobby that you have to force yourself to do just just so that you can find a hobby. Like mm -hmm. look back in your life and think about all the things that you may have enjoyed when you were younger or or had dreams about for the future and Find a way to get your life reconnected back into those things somehow. I mean, for you, I can tell that it's a lot of your artwork. Mm. For me, it's my playfulness and mm. my yes. physical activity. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's it's going to be different for everybody, but you just have to find what yeah. that thing is. And, and I didn't find mine until I was 19, so it's it's not something that. And dress up is a hobby. Yes, that's yes. So cool. That's so cool. an incredible creative Your outlet. Coach is very good. That's so cool. Are you going to a play? Uh, we came from one. Where'd you go? It's oh, really? Okay. You okay, are so in a play, of course. This is our stage. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Do you make your own clothes, or do you guys just buy them? We're at stores. Right. No, actually, no, that's not true. We do make some. That's so cool. Like the hats. That's so cool. That's we very awesome for you to have amazing coats. That's very good. We went to see Spark. Very cool. Keep it up. You get a plus in life. You also. So see, for them, their creative outlet is being artsy in their dress and attire. And, and I have to say that we also like to do that, but sometimes we uh, we reserve that for our festivals and stuff where we don't stand out as much. We don't dress in fur coats, but we certainly dress a little bit more festively in certain environments. I do believe that. <laughs> I would love so, to dress like that. Oh, I. But it's fun. It's yeah. fun when there's yeah. festival and you change your spirit and you become so happy yeah. and and in your dream or something. And a, and you dress how you want. Exactly. And it's it's a mainstream style, but you dress in these colorful patterns and yes. you wear the things that you like and it yeah. makes you happy. So. Yes. You should never force yourself to do things just because you think that's what everybody else expects you to do. And I think a byproduct of finding a hobby that you're really into is seeing how the skills that you learn from that apply to the rest of your life. Regardless of the hobby, I mean, even the basis of having a hobby is perhaps personal happiness, but that translates into your work and into your livelihood in general. But like, for example, skill toys, I mean, I can catch stuff now, which is great. Yes. <laughs> but that also, but that also helps your brain in other ways. You're you're making new connections in your brain. Like, I started to notice that my reading became more fluent. My mm. math became more natural. Mm. So it, beyond just your physical abilities being increased, your other mental capabilities are going to increase as well. I read one story or one poem. One lady said, "Every flower will." blossom will bloom at its own time maybe you were not developed at that particular time but through those activities it opens up and make you more confident so that open up your, your potential yeah. yes I agree with that really and I think also that there's not very much awareness of coming into 
you're oneself as an individual a lot of the time. We are looking for new performers. <laughs> I'm so <sorry>, distracted. <laughs> I'm easy to be distracted, and you are. I also. trust me. I yeah. share that. Yeah, that that's our weakness and our strengths. Also, <laughs> you can be a good detective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We forgot. <laughs> yeah, Where were we talking about? <laughs> See, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I was talking about how there's not enough emphasis on becoming your own person and yes. developing as an individual. There's not much spiritual growth, and people get very enveloped in technology and these very impersonal ways of connecting with others and I feel like that's kind of detrimental not only to the individual and it kind of makes you sick almost that you whenever you're in this state of isolation isolation and, and insecurity and uh, uncertainty mm. and I mean we're very young people so we uh, I mean we ex have experienced that quite recently it's been uh, a continual transformation for us to always be learning and, and developing more of this grounded sense of self where we can be very comfortable and create this space for ourselves within our our existence yeah but something that I mean we run into a lot of people who are older than us and and think that they could never find something like that because they're older than us. They think that age really is a factor, and it's really not. I mean, you can be in your 60s or 80s and still discover something that you really enjoy and have that affect your life in a positive way. It has nothing to do with the fact that we're young and we started early. It doesn't have anything to do with that. Yeah. We didn't start early. I certainly didn't start early. I started a year and a half ago. I mean, some people, we know people who have grown up in the circus and, and have spent their whole life traveling and learning those types of toys and uh, different skills like that. And that's starting early, like from birth. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, bad, it's a bad misconception to think that your age is going to be a determining factor in whether you can learn something or not. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's a little disappointing to hear people, people's mindset is that once you reach a certain age, like, you can't learn anything new, like, mm. everything that is in your mind is set in stone, and we're a lot more fluid than that, so mm. I would change your perspective if that's your perspective. And I think change. Yes. that's the nature of existence, fluidity and change and transformation and evolution. Nothing is stagnant, so you shouldn't expect yourself to be as such either. Mm. My mother learned painting when she retired. And uh, is there a lot of activities for retired people to learn new things? Oh, yeah. I think there are so many. It's, the problem is the inner fear. Yes. Of, don't you think so? Yes. Yeah, yeah fear, for example, um, I don't know that it's exactly fear when it comes to my parents, but my, both my parents are retired now and they're getting out camping and doing more things and I've suggested to, to my mom to go out and do more physical activities. And again, she thinks that her age is going to be a determining factor and will inhibit her when really I think it's just that, that fear that her age and her, yeah. her state, her body state is going to, to keep her from doing those things. But once she, she goes out and actually does it, hmm. then her mindset will change. Yeah. So that's that's something that people need to remember. Did you say you will change it, and now you are changing? Yeah. It? At least. Yes. How good is that? Yeah. yeah. And just look at her. And she's so beautiful and youthful. Oh, thank you. You can see from the background mirror. <laughs> Turn it around. Show everybody your outfit today. Here. Stand up and do us a little twirl. Stand up, do a little. Give us a twirl, hi. Outfit of the day. So Outfit of the blue day. Blue and white. Blue and white. Blue sushi. We've got a scarf. We got we got beautiful earrings. Earring. <laughs> and your shoes are also blue and white, right? Yes. They're like the same pattern. Shall we do? Yes, here? please. Cute. Okay. <laughs> Is there any spiritual reason or something? Um, um, no, it's mostly mostly just for style and for fun. Um, it is a good style. Did you think? No, no, I bought this. Um, my spirituality comes from from. I am Christ. It comes from my 
sense of self, which is kind of maybe hard to explain. Um, I find my spirituality in my physical activity mm. um, because it helps me get connected to myself and I think that a lot of people who are religious and spiritual are really finding a way to connect to themselves more than anything else. Um, I also find my spirituality in science. Mm. I find it, it's beautiful that everything is made of atoms and that all of the atoms in our yeah. bodies were cooked up by stars and that nothing is really separate and everything is really connected and yeah. we're all just mm -hmm. vibrations. And I find a really deep sense of connectedness hmm. uh, knowing those things. So that's where a lot of my spirituality comes from. I just wear these kinds of things for style more than anything else. We like to decorate ourselves. Yes, very we much. like to be pretty. 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 A pair of beautiful young people. And uh, you are very. <laughs> I will do a picture, definitely later. You are very, you are very comfortable with your hands. Are you comfortable with your whole body movement from very young? No, no. I could not play sports Clubs. or anything. I couldn't. I was not very coordinated at all when I was oh. younger. So it wasn't until I started the contact juggling that any oh. of that even began. Like when oh. I first started doing it, I was terrible. Oh. But I kept doing it, and each day I would do it. Mm. I was less terrible. Until I became more good. Fluid. Right. 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 Fluid. Right. Yeah. So it was a it was a completely learning process. Oh. Just like flexibility. People aren't born super flexible. Yeah. You are as an infant, but you can become more flexible. Like we do yoga and I never used to be able to stretch in the ways that I can and mm. that's another example of things that people think are permanent about themselves yeah. that can change. Yeah. And uh, did you do soccer and uh, no. those? Oh. No, I didn't play any sports at all. I mean, I played baseball a little bit okay. when I was like seven and eight, but okay. I was so terrible at it that I just, it wasn't that fun. So I just didn't. Okay. You did not play soccer, you did not play uh, 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 baseball. Were you popular at school? How can you make friends? Hmm. Um, it's hard to say because I wasn't. It, I wasn't really that popular in the sense that a lot of people wanted to hang out with me. A lot of people knew who I was, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I was more focused on the things that I kind of wanted to do, mm -hmm. and those things were often very different than what other kids were doing. Mm. So I think that that's more important than being yes. popular. Yes. It's important to have a social group. That's yes. without goes without saying, yeah. but you should never force yourself to be something that you're not, so that you can have a large social group. Because those people aren't really going to be connected to you the way they think that they're connected to you. You have to find what you want to do, and find others that do what they want to do, and find some way to connect with them. Okay, uh, it's always very interesting to talk deeper into a person, and then you find this beautiful or dramatic landscape of inner landscape. But if you have anything you feel not comfortable to talk, I can edit the video or I can cut it. I'm an open book. Honestly. We don't have too much that we uh, keep secretive. Yeah, we're very um, we're very comfortable with ourselves, so there's nothing that's ever going to be too much of you to ask of us. Wonderful, wonderful. I think on the topic of popularity, mm. sometimes people, I mean, everybody has a sense of loneliness about them, I think, that desire to connect to other individuals without perhaps knowing exactly how, but I think that a lot of people just focus on the fact that they are lonely rather than focusing on how they can make themselves a desirable person to be around. And so instead of focusing on bettering themselves or um, becoming more in tune with themselves or focusing on something that will make them marketable, so to speak, as a social human being, they just wallow in the fact that they're lonely. and. And that can be a pretty destructive cycle to fall yeah. into. It's actually quite myself. I am a shy person. And it really, it gives me a lot of pressure to, to open up myself. I go to party, I'm not a popular person. I, I'm not popular. I'm not very comfortable, talkative. So, I don't know if you have any... Uh, any thoughts or suggestion on, I do. on those? I definitely do because yeah, I was just maybe thinking you about may this. Share. The 
a lot of times people focus on what other people are thinking about them and that is a fear response and so that a lot of times causes people to be shy and shut down. Yes. Um, for me, I was definitely like that. I was always really shy. I never really wanted to talk to anybody. But then I just started to try to focus more on myself yes. in the sense of being kind to others and being honest with others and just being myself. And that inadvertently caused people to want to be around me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So. I became more comfortable with people because I was more comfortable with myself. Okay. And that's not always easy. That's definitely mm. something that's yes. it's hard to start to do. Yes. But if you can take those little steps each time yeah. and just smile at people and just try and chat, I mean, there's nothing wrong with small talk. It can be uncomfortable sometimes, but mm. you'll always find a way right. to kind of be involved with other people as long as you focus on being kind and trying to be who you really are and yeah. not hiding who you are. And I think those are really what's important. Yeah. And sometimes ignore. Ignore the things that is not so important. Ignore the things that do not make you happy. Make sure you are happy is the most important. Yes, exactly. And because if you're happy, other people are going to sense that about you and they're yes. going to want to be around you. But I think also, not everybody is extroverted. Not everybody has to be the life of the party all the time. I think that introverts might learn to respect their introversion to some extent. It's only whenever it becomes a, a sense of hostility that it's a problem. But it's perfectly acceptable to be quiet and contained. I am not that way. And even in your presence, I am much more... Reserved? Yes, much more <laughs> confined than I might otherwise be, simply because I'm very loud and boisterous a lot of the time. But um, not everybody is that way, and not everybody feels comfortable fulfilling that role. So I feel you just need to be in tune with where your comfort zone is, and if somebody comes up to you and talks to you and you don't want to talk to them, you say, excuse me, I would like to go somewhere else, and you leave the situation and forget about it. And if somebody comes up to you and talks to you and you do want to talk to them, then you continue to talk to them. Yeah, just being honest with people and with yourself, I think, is, is really going to be beneficial to you if you are trying to be happier and trying to find a way to connect with other people, honesty is really important. Yeah, it's so important. People think they have this safe net. They don't want to be too frank because they are afraid that it will come with disadvantages or come with people being taken aback by them or, or something or other. But for me, I find it to be a safety net to be so honest and to mm. be very frank. Yes on the level, so to speak, just because, I mean, you are getting what you see whenever you talk to someone such as me or TJ, or you just, you have all the cards on the table, if you ask me a question, I will answer it, and if I feel a certain way, or if I have needs that need to be met, like, that's the, the essence of assertiveness, is not being aggressive, but rather asserting your needs, you say what you, what you need or what you want. And that's not to be demanding, that's just to simply convey. It just goes for a smoother social transition, like this is what I would like to happen. If that is not compatible with your views, we can collaborate and come to a decision. Compromise. But yes, honesty is very important to both of us. It's just being frank and being honest about what you want and not reserving yourself because you think somebody might get offended because in the long run, I mean, the truth always spills out, so yes. you might as well just yes. offer it up. Yeah. And I find that being honest is also a really, a really great way to keep yourself from being embarrassed in social situations as well. Mm -hmm. um, How do you explain this one? I'm trying to think of an example. Um, yeah. If you're honest with yourself in the sense that you realize that you've made mis made a mistake, yeah, for yeah, instance, I, I understand. and like maybe yeah. admit to people that, yes. oops, I just did that, like, okay. uh -huh. oh, I heard something the other day, it said, when you use humor in a difficult situation, you win, and I find that that's like exactly what you need to do that is so true. if you're in a situation where yes. you're not super comfortable, yes. or you're embarrassed by something. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just find a way to like ease your situation and yeah. it'll make other people feel at yes. ease. Yes. So then it becomes 
the situation's diffused and you're yes. no longer feeling tense about yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Don't get wrapped up in people who make themselves unhappy by focusing on minutia of daily life that has no relevance to anything. If you lead your life that way and are so afraid of offending other people mm. because of their own beliefs, I mean, obviously, don't be belligerent, mm. but you might vocalize your own beliefs with pride, because I should think if you believe something strongly, you should be proud of the fact that, that you hold that belief. But use your vocabulary to convey it in the way that you want it to be conveyed. Mm. If you're trying to get it conveyed in a positive light, yes. you want to make sure that you're using the right words yes. to convey what you're thinking and, and not necessarily... And yes. not like trying to hint with action, but right. rather explicitly saying words using language. It's one of our, I would say, our most valuable tool, yes. And sometimes, for instance, when Summer and I get a little annoyed with each other, as people who hang out together a lot do. And live together. And live together, together and travel together and do lots of things together. It's, it's easier for us to get along with each other if we're just honest and use words and focus on our tone of voice when we're talking to each other. Um, and I notice a lot of people sometimes have trouble figuring out how to interact with people because they don't know either the words or they don't know what kind of tone of voice to use. Um, but the only reason that we were able to get that way is because we're starting to be more conscious of it and focusing on, okay, how can I express to this person what I want without getting the opposite reaction from them that I don't want. Is that because also you, you've been together for so long, you know each other and you already figure out it's better to be honest. Yes. It's hard because both of us probably act the same way towards other people, mm -hmm. but they don't respond in the okay. same way that we would respond to each other. They don't necessarily respond in that that positive... Yeah. Mm, yes. I know. You build up a kind of bond, an in-house code of doing things. Yeah. The, the two of you already know in this situation what to do. Yeah, well, and we, we try to do that with other people, but sometimes other yes. people don't recognize that that's yeah. what we're trying to do, and yeah. so it makes it it makes it a little bit difficult. And then that's that's when it's hard for us is when other people start to get frustrated, yeah. and then yes. it tries on our patience. Yes, so. very simplistic. Maybe we can use the same way to think. They are thinking, why you do not understand me, right? It's actually the same thing. Yeah. You apply, I mean, with us it's very easy. If he's doing something obnoxious, I'll simply say you're annoying me and he'll either do continue he's doing, doing it elsewhere or, <laughs> or he'll stop doing it. And the same goes for me. And for me, I feel like that's the preferable approach. If somebody is offended by something that I'm doing, I would much rather them tell me that it, they are offended by it. And not I, just walk away and slam a door. Yeah, and not just, rem you know, because then I have no idea what, what, the, what the hubbub is about. But if somebody were to tell me, for example, I, I have a tendency to sing very loud in very public places without any regard to anybody around me, which is one of my fallacies, so to speak. <laughs> But I mean, if somebody were to come up to me and be like, you know, I'm trying to enjoy my nice meal and you're singing very loudly, then I would be very upset with myself and I would feel bad and I would be quiet. In another situation, if somebody was offended by something minute, You like know what I think? The condition of all your talk and all your being honest is that a good relation you do have a very good, very profound relation. That is, that is the, the origin of all these things. Yeah. If two persons are not in, in such a harmonious and coherent existence, it doesn't work. We've, we've learned from each other and that's, that's helped us interact with other people. Um, so it's, it's nice because we're able to portray what we want in a positive light and that without the other person maybe knowing it makes them portray what they want in a positive light as well yes. just because positivity breeds positivity and vice yes. versa so um, we've definitely learned from each other and it's helped us interact with other human beings as well you are actually filling up each other's weakness or gap and just just make it a better 
exactly. a better seat, a better computer. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You want to say something more, or do I stop it? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, for everybody who's watching, um, I know you all love Haiying. I also love Haiying. I'm very happy that I finally got to meet her today. Um, and I think a lot of her messages are exactly in line with what people need to put into their lives, and that is to be silly every day and find what you love and don't be completely consumed by your daily life. And be kind. Um, so and be kind to people. Be kind and be compassionate. There's too many people in, in this angry, angry cloud all the time, but it doesn't make any sense. If you are interacting with other people, you're much more likely to make a smooth path for yourself if you are kind to people. Because sometimes people are going to be in a bad mood regardless. But if you're in a bad mood, you're increasing the likelihood that the people around you are going to be reacting negatively reacting appropriately to your attitude and so just being yes but negative compassion the battery is running short let the three of us okay. together yes, and <laughs> all the lucky men <laughs> okay i will do a picture okay okay bye bye friends bye